friends, it's Lorna the Ladybird Stitcher. Today is Wednesday the 21st of November and I'm here for an update. Um, we've had a good two weeks except for our internet. Um, I mentioned a couple of weeks ago that we'd been experiencing dropouts and straight after I'd loaded my last video um, it just got so intolerable that I had to actually make the call. I spent 45 minutes on hold before I actually spoke to anyone um, and then I spent an hour and a half talking to them. They sent a technician round last Monday, um, so Monday last week. He said that our, the socket we were using was faulty and we'd have to change sockets and of course it worked while he was here. It worked for an hour after he left and then it went back to the way it was. So we changed cables, we changed filters, we changed modems, they sent us a new modem. Finally, um, on Tuesday, um, they tested the external lines outside and found that there was a fault in that. And th the test took all of five minutes. Um, sorry, that was Monday. And then yesterday they sent the technician. He was here for all of an hour. It seems to be working now, so fingers crossed that I can get this uploaded um, and yeah, no more issues. Um, the, that means that my internet, um, obviously if my internet's been playing up, I haven't been able to watch as much Flosstube as I would like. Um, even when I have watched Flosstube, I haven't left the usual comments. Um, I like to comment on people I have a connection with. Um, on their videos. If I haven't left you a comment and I normally do, I'm sorry. It's just that I've been wanting to use the internet for watching FlossTube rather than commenting um, because I'll have it for half an hour and then I won't have it for 20 minutes and then it will come back and so it's just been all over the place. Um, so yeah, hopefully it's been fixed and if you're seeing this, it probably has. <laughs> but he's going to call me in about two hours to check that um, I'm happy with it now. So I want to quickly get this uploaded but maybe before then or at least edited before then so that I can use my phone for that. Anyway, um, for stitching, I have a couple of things to show you. Um, I'll, I'll start with haul because I only got two patterns. Um, I received part five of the Songbird series by, Co Country, by Cottage Garden Samplings and this one is called Bluebird of Happiness. These are so pretty, these, these bird series. They're so beautiful. Um, they're quite big. Each panel is really quite big. Um, stitch count is 159 by 159. So they look deceptively small, but they're really pretty. And then I found this on Color Cascade um, clearance. It's called Another Fleur de Lis by um, Alessandra Adelaide Needleworks. And... I love Fleur de Lis and that's a really nice one. This one calls for DMCs but I'm thinking maybe I'll try for silks, who knows, um, for that one. So that's really pretty as well. So that's that's all the haul I, I received. Um, I'm cutting back. I feel like my stash is kind of, I have enough to last me for more than a lifetime. And I feel like I really don't need much more. So I'm trying to be good about that. Um, so the last time I was here, I mentioned that I wanted to finish my M block of uh, the Prairie Schooler alphabet, which I did. And then I also started on the ampersand block, which is this one. So here's what it looked like the last time you saw it. And here it is now. So I finished the mermaid and I decided to put the ampersand in the middle because the M is a couple of stitches wider than the ones above. The N is I think four stitches wider so it would have been really tight in here and I think the O is also wide, wider than the one above. So um, I decided that the ampersand was, the ampersand is um, the same width or at least the same width as the bottom bit. So I've, it was easier just to put the ampersand in there. And I thought having that in the middle rather than right at the end, it's probably good too. It's um, it's a different, it's an unusual kind of panel. It probably doesn't, 
it stands out because it's not a letter it's an ampersand and so I thought that would look good in the middle and I know that Lisa from Luby's lot hi Lisa um, she's done all of hers on one huge fabric um, all 27 panels and um, I know she put hers in the center um, and yeah I like that idea so yeah so this is on 28 count one over one and I've already stitched the first nine letters on a piece of fabric that's identical to this one and I'll stitch the, the eight letters and ampersand on this one and then the last nine letters will go on the other piece of fabric that's also identical so that's that um, the reason I started a new panel is because I've kind of shaken things up a little bit with my planning for December and I'll go into that a little bit later on um, I also wanted to finish my um, story keep um, secret door by heaven and earth designs and here's what it will look like when it's finished And here's what it looked like the last time you saw it. And I've, I didn't want to finish it, sorry. I wanted to finish the page I was working on. And I have, that was, that's page four. It was only a half page, but I've managed that. So I've done pages one to four. I still have pages five to eight to go, um, but page, Page six and eight are half the width and seven and eight are a little bit shorter than the others. So then there's only one more full page left of this one. Um, a lot of black stitching in pages six and eight. So the last um, on this side. So I've left the DMC 310 hanging. So I can take that up whenever and if I ever want to stitch just one color I can just take that up and do that but that's that's where that is now so I don't know if I'm going to get back to it later this year or not probably not but I do want definitely want to finish it next year I had a new start um, I started weather wise and I started this top one and I was originally going going to do it on piece of fabric that I had tea dyed and it was going to be one over one on 28 count and it was going to be I think three inches by four inches um, I think it was even going to be a little bit smaller than that and I decided that it was that was going to be way too small so I had this piece of fabric in my stash this is um, kind of the end of the last piece of, uh, the end of a larger piece of fabric and so I decided to use this one um, and so I've started there. This is a linen. I think it's 28 count, but I'm doing it two over two rather than one over one. So it's going to be a little bit bigger than it was going to, going to be originally. So I'm really enjoying that one. And I'll get that back to that one um, probably next year. Then I, did, I wanted to spend a couple of weeks on my Mirabilia's. Um, for November and so I pulled out Enchanted Mermaid which I started in June for Belinda's birthday hi Belinda um, she is from An Itch to Cross Stitch and she is another Aussie lady Aussie floss tuber um, and there were a bunch of us at the Mirabilia retreat in February that started this one for Belinda's birthday um, so here's what it looked like the last time you saw it And here it is now. So I'm really happy with, with how much progress I got on that one. Um, this, this fabric, sorry, I don't have the note. Um, I'll put the, the name of the fabric down here, but it's from Silk Weaver. It's a 28 count Opal Lugana. And um, the only problem I'm having with it is that 
the chronic that goes in there isn't showing up so I'm hoping that it will show up more when I have beads on it um, most of the back stitching or where I can do the back stitching that's all done so um, there's not going to be any back stitching around this this area um, that kind of chronic also shows up a lot in her outfit or costume um, her tail or fin or whatever <laughs> whatever it is but um yeah so um, I have to make a decision there on whether to remove that chronic there and change it to a different color that will show up more or um, leave it there and hope for the best when I put beads in we'll see but I'm really happy with my progress I spent a week on that one and most of the skin is done she has a lot of skin and so I've just I just opted for two over two um, normal skin as charted um, I've never tried one over one skin unless it's been charted that way um, and I wasn't going to start on this <laughs> this lady that shows so much skin so hopefully I'll show I'll try that on one of my pieces of Mirabilia, um, one of my ladies of Mirabilia's, but not on this one. So there she is, she's beautiful, and I'm looking forward to getting back to her. The plan was also to spend a week on Andromeda, which I started with Terry from Terry Lee Crafts. Hi Terry, and I'm glad to see you back on Floss Tube. Um, so we started this on the 31st of October, but the two weeks that I planned to spend on Mirabilia's were back to back. So I just spent a week on Enchanted Mermaid and I stitched a lot on it, um, as you could probably tell from the progress I made. And I really didn't feel like spending that much time on Andromeda after that. So I didn't, haven't, haven't had much progress on that one. But um, yeah, she will come along, I'm sure. I'll work on her more next year again. So now for plans, um, I've decided that December is going to be um, just Christmas stitching. So um, I have a few projects that I've put on my Tiny Decisions app and I'll be using the wheel to decide what I'll be stitching for the next few weeks. Um, I'm starting it as soon as I finish the ampersand block on my Prairie Schooler. So I'll start, um, I'll spin the wheel and see what comes up and then start on that project and then I'll go right up until the 6th of January which is when um, I traditionally bring my Christmas um, decorations down um, for the Feast of the Epiphany. Um, so that's approximately six weeks. I will still be working on Guardians of Notre Dame on the 1st and probably the 2nd of December. I will still be starting my Lady Mirabilia on the 13th of December for my birthday um, but the rest of the time I'll be working on Christmas stitching and so I'm going to go over the the um, projects that I have planned for those six weeks um, in no particular order but first I'm going to go through the ones that I've already started so the the ones that are whips um, the first one is Jane Austen at the Christmas Ball by Brooks Books Publishing and I had originally planned to finish this by the end of this year and that's obviously not going to happen but I do want to spend some time on it now because it's Christmas and it's a Christmas piece and I'd really like to get more progress on it than, than just her at the top of her head. Um, another one is Santa's Village by Country Cottage Needleworks and here it is so far. And I will be stitching the next one along in the series, which is um, North Pole Post Office. That one. This is on 32 count lamb's wool, and it's the cord for fabric. Um, there's also stocking faithful friends, and here's what it will look like when it's finished. And here's where it is so far. So all I have left to do on this one is two more rows. And although these, this was page one and two, 
page three was blank, page four and five and page six was blank. Um, the next two rows will have three pages on them, not full pages, but um, because it's in the shape of a stocking. So here's where that is now. And I'm looking forward to getting back to this one. I'm, I'm in a full coverage mood at the moment and that hasn't really gone away for a while. So I'm looking forward to, to spending some time on this one as well. And then the rest will be new starts. Um, so I have the Lizzie Kate mystery sampler, uh, Spirit of Christmas, which will look like that. It's no longer a mystery because it's been released. It's in three parts. I have all the thread and the embellishments for this. Um, I bought it because I was worried that Lizzie Kate would stop producing it when they when they stopped um, designing. Um, I think I bought this from the States actually um, when I was there earlier this year. I have a piece of fabric that I think will work, but um, we'll see. But yeah, I'd like I really like to make a start on that one. And like I said, it comes in three different parts. Um, but I don't think it's going to be that big, so I think it'll work. I think it'll be a nice kind of whip. Um, another one I really want to start, and this is another large piece. All my baps, all my whips at the moment seem to be quite big baps. So, but here is um, "Flowers of the Holy Night" by uh, Glendon Place. I'm really looking forward to starting this one. I can't wait. Um, I have all the threads that I need. They're mostly dinky dies. Um, so I, and they're var variegated and I kind of spent more money than I would have had I chosen to stitch DMC, but stitch with DMC. But I thought um, it's such a pretty piece that I really wanted to, to put the money towards that. And then I bought, um, this is Opal Lugana. It, I've got half a metre uh, full length of this, so that should be more than enough for this project. Um, it is 28 count Lugana um, Opal. So, yeah, I, I'm looking forward to starting that one. And I'm also adding to my wheel a Mill Hill kit, um, and that if that comes up, it'll be any Mill Hill kit that has a Christmas theme in my stash. And I have quite a few in my stash. So I'm thinking I'll probably just do a small ornament. Um, and that'll probably take me an afternoon to finish. If if it's on a day that, um, that I have a whole afternoon to work on it. And then I can have it on my Christmas tree. So um, I'm hoping that kind of comes up earlier on in the month. Um, and then the other one is Verbena's Christmas Mood, and I'll insert a picture here because it's a PDF. And I'm thinking that one probably won't take me too long to finish either. So hopefully less than a week and I'll have that one done and I'll hopefully frame it and have it up um, with my Christmas decorations. Um, so I may kind of jiggle the wheel a little bit and have it so that those smaller projects are at the beginning so that I can get them done and have them um, decorate my house. Um, we've started putting decorations up. I've got the Christmas tree up. Um, my daughter insisted that we put it up early. I like to start it on the 1st of December um, for the first day of Advent, but um, she insisted and I thought, well, why, why wait when we had time yesterday? So we, so we put the Christmas tree up and she's so excited. She helped and it was worth it. So, um, so that's done anyway. I don't have to worry about doing that, um, later on. Anyway, um, the only other thing I wanted to talk about was I finished a book. Um, it was called The Perfumer's Secret by Fiona McIntosh. I no longer have it with me because I've returned it to the library. It was due last week, so I had to return it. Um, I really enjoyed it. Um, I mentioned a little bit about the plot last time, but basically it was two families in Grasse, I think, or Grass. Um, I know I'm not pronouncing that properly and I'm really sorry, but um, I don't know any French. Um, but yeah, it's a town in France and um, to this day, they're still famous for their perfume. Um, but these are two fictional perfume houses in that area of France. Um, on the brink of World War One. 
and um, the head of the first or the, or the largest perfume company in that area is um, marrying the daughter of the second largest um, perfume company in that area and it's an arranged marriage she her her words are he he makes my skin crawl she really doesn't want to marry him but she goes ahead with it um and then the war starts so on the on straight after their wedding reception he's called out to go to war and he goes and before he returns she receives a letter from his brother who he's never even met um, explaining that she shouldn't get married because he has a secret that he needs to tell her um, she thinks well it's too late I'm, I'm already married but um, doesn't think any more about it meanwhile um, this brother arrives and tells her something that will rock both their worlds and as well as the, the whole um, kind of village so um, yeah it, I really enjoyed it um, it was a good book um, it wasn't you know the the best book I've ever read but it was really enjoyable it was I think factually ac accurate um, in so far as the time of the war um, as well as it said at the back that the the author had researched quite a bit on how perfume is produced and the kind of techniques used to or, or that were used back then um, to produce a lot of perfume so learned a little bit about that as well um so yeah i i recommend that um if you if that sounds like you might be into it and it's called the perfume is secret by fiona mcintosh and i will leave details of that below um that's all i have for you today um with regards to my christmas stitching i might have a series of vlogs rather than come back and just do the same style that i normally do um but we'll see. I don't know. Um, I'll see how much time I have. It's getting really busy for us um, around here, not only with Christmas um, parties and things, but um, quite a few birthdays in my family and friends as well. So, um, yeah, it's starting to get quite busy and I don't know when I'm going to have time to film again. But, um, yeah, you'll see me when you'll see me. But um, I want to wish everyone in America a happy Thanksgiving, which I believe is tomorrow um stay safe and enjoy time with your family and um i will hopefully be back by christmas but if i'm not have a great christmas and i'll see you again soon bye everyone